Welcome to Electron Online. In the previous videos, we saw how to find the stable distribution matrix using a 2x2 two two probability matrix in a 2x2 two two states situation. Here we're going to show the same example, but with a 3x3, three three, meaning there's three states, A, B, and C, and so we're going to try to find out what the final distribution is for those three states, the final distribution matrix. So we know that if we take the probability matrix and multiply it times the stable matrix, we should get back the stable matrix. That's the hallmark of the Markov chains, that if we do this n number of times, n being a very big number, we then finally get the distribution matrix to be such that it no longer changes when we multiply it times this matrix. So when we assume that the stable matrix is going to be A, B, and C, whatever those final values are, we then have to find out what those final values are, and we can do that using this principle. In other words, we're going to take the probability matrix, 0 0.8, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.7, 0 0.1, 0 0.3, 0 0.1, and 0 0.6, multiply it times ABC. Now those, of course, are the final values of those three states, and then I should get the same three values, A, B, and C, back. And of course, the whole idea is to find out what A, B, and C are equal to. So when we go ahead and multiply this out, we multiply this row times this column and set it equal to A. So I have 0.8A plus 0.2B plus 0.3C equals A. So it's this row multiplied times this column, this times this times this, and add it together. So this times this plus this times this plus this times this equals A. Now we take the second row in this column, this times this plus this times this plus this times this. So we get 0.1A plus 0.7b plus 0.1c equals b, and equals that right there. And now multiply this times this, so we get 0.1a plus 0.1b plus 0.6c equals c. And of course, we also have to realize that a plus b plus c equals 1, because we know that when we add all the numbers together in the vertical direction, they should always add up to 1. All right, we're going to take the first equation right here to solve for A in terms of B and C. To do that, we move the point 8A to the right side, so we end up with 0.2B plus 0.3C is equal to A minus 0.8A. Then combining the right side, we get 0.2B plus 0.3C is equal to 0.2A. Then if we multiply both sides of the equation by 10 to get rid of the decimal, we get 2b plus 3c is equal to 2a. And then if I divide both sides of the equation by 2, I get uh, b plus 3 over 2c equals a. So now I have a in terms of b and c. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to then take that and plug that into one of the two equations. I only need to plug it into one of the two equations because I still have a fourth equation to work with right here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to replace every A in the second equation by B plus B and C, and then we can solve for B in terms of C or C in terms of B, one or the other. <clears throat> so we take the second equation, come up here, and so instead of A, I'm going to plug in what A is equal to. So here we have 0.1 times... Instead of A, I'm going to write B plus 3 over 2C. Then we have uh, plus 0. Point, let's see, I plugged it into the second equation. So plus 0.7B plus 0.1C, and that equals B. All right. Probably what you want to do here is multiply both sides of the equation again by 10 to get rid of those decimal places. So I multiply both sides by 10. I get b plus 3 over 2c plus 7b plus c equals 10b. And so now I'm going to move all the b's over to one side. All the c's stay on this side. So I end up with 3 half c plus 1c. That would be 5 over 2c. So I combine the 2c terms together equals 10b minus 7b minus 1b. All right, so that means I have 5 over 2c is equal to 2b, or if I, hmm, let's see here, if I multiply, well, it doesn't really matter. I can multiply both, both sides by 2 to get rid of the, the uh, fraction. So if I do that, I get 5c equals 4b. 
All right, that's good enough. So now I have B in terms of C. I can write B equals 5 fourths C or C equals 4 fifths B. doesn't matter. But what I can do now is I can go ahead and take this equation right here. Let me put it right up here. So we have A plus B plus C equals 1. And notice that A can be written in terms of B and C. So here I can say that B plus 3 over 2C plus B plus C equals 1. And over here I can say, well, for every B, or maybe better yet, for every C, I can write C as 4 fifths B. So let write C equals 4 fifths B. So that came from this right here. And we're then going to replace every C by 4 fifths B. Let's do that. So we have B plus 3 over 2 times C, and C is 4 fifths B. And plus B, and plus C, which again is 4 fifths B equals 1. All right, so then simplifying things a little bit, this becomes a 1, this becomes a 2. So I have those 5s in the denominator. So let's go ahead and multiply everything by 5 to get rid of the fraction. So we have 5B plus. So when I multiply times 5, I get rid of the 5. I get 3 times 2, which is plus 6B plus 5 times B and plus 4b equals 5. So what I did here is I multiply both sides by 5. Now I combine like terms, see what I get. It's like 10 plus 10, that's 20b equals 5, or b, oop, that's a sad looking b here. So b is equal to 5 divided by 20, which is equal to 1 fourth. So now I have b, let me circle the whole thing, b is equal to one quarter. So when I come up here, b will then be one quarter in the stable matrix. But I still need to find a and c. All right, so here I have c in terms of b, so let me go ahead and use that. So c is equal to four fifths b, and b, whoop, let me replace b, since b is equal to one quarter, I can go ahead and do that. So that means the fourths cancel out, so c is equal to one fifth. So B is 1 fourth, C is 1 fifth, and since A is B plus C, or A plus B plus C is equal to 1, I can say that A is equal to 1 minus B minus C, or 1 minus B, which is 1 fourth, minus C, which is 1 fifth. Let's see here. Probably I could use a common denominator of 20 here. That would be easier. So this would be if I multiply, let's see here. Uh, this is 20 over 20 minus 5 over 20 minus 4 over 20. So this becomes 11 over 20. So notice I have A in terms of the fraction 11 over 20. I have B in terms of 1 over 4 and C in terms of 1 over 5. I probably want to go ahead now and write all three of them in terms of a fraction over 20. So this cannot be written as... Since A is 11 over 20, let me write that down. Oop. A little bit better here. So 11 divided by 20. B is 1 over 4, which means 5 over 20. And C, which is 1 over 5, which is 4 over 20. And so that would be then finally the stable distribution matrix. Now notice when I add those three together, they do add up to 20 over 20, which is equal to 1. Then finding the stable matrix P, that is equal to, we're just going to repeat this column three times right here. So this would be 11 over 20, 11 over 20, and 11 over 20. This would be 5 divided by 20, 5 divided by 20, 5 divided by 20, and finally 4 divided by 20, 4 divided by 20, 4 divided by 20. And there we go. So we have the stable distribution matrix and the stable matrix. In other words, if we multiply this matrix by itself n number of times, n being a very big number, we end up with this stable matrix right here. If we want to then go ahead and multiply this times the initial state, we get the stable matrix or the stable distribution matrix. And that's how we work with a 3x3 three three matrix. It's a little bit more work, and of course, we can use calculators and computers if you want to make it simpler, but at least you can see that you can go through the process algebraically and come up with the proper values for A, B, and C, so to give us the final state for A, B, and C, which then give us the final state distribution matrix. And that's how we do that.